Hello, everyone. Welcome to this month's uh, webinar hosted by VRHP. We're excited that you're here and excited that you've taken a couple of moments out of your day to, to be with us to talk about how data can help you succeed. Uh, just a couple of things to make you aware of as we start to get underway here. Uh, we do have a couple of upcoming webinars we want to make you aware of. We have one on November 14th where we do some product demonstrations about some housekeeping and maintenance tools that uh, you need to be aware of and can use in your uh, departments. We also have on December 12th an in-house carpet cleaning program. So if you're looking at augmenting your revenue or just looking for a better way to have presentation in your properties, we'll certainly be talking about how to set that up so you can succeed in that endeavor. We also have a couple of one-day seminars that are approaching. If you're uh, in Nashville or Park City or uh, Winter Park, Colorado, we've got specific dates for you. Or if you're just looking for some sunshine in December, you could join us in Hawaii. We'll be on Kauai, uh, Oahu, and the Big Island on each of those dates. So you're happy to, uh, you're welcome to join us there if you'd like. And then also we have uh, our online certifications that will be coming. Currently we offer nine certifications and uh, from housekeeper, laundry and maintenance tech uh, all the way up to managers of those departments. And those will be online soon. So you, uh, you can be able to become certified uh, that way. We also have our national conference coming up where we've partnered with the Vacation Rental Managers Association. And that is October 27th through the 30th in the great city of Las Vegas at the MGM Grand. And it's gonna be you know, two and a half days full of information where the front of the house and the back of the house can be together and to collaborate and to enjoy um, the festivities there. And so um, with that, we will transition over to our, our webinar and uh, wanna start us off with a quote here that says, data is like water. The world is covered in it, but only 3% is currently usable. And that's by David Turnbull. So here we have all this information that's available to us and, and how we use it and how we look at it uh, and how we accomplish those things are certain, uh, certainly um, important to us. And so there's, there's three types of data for us to consider and look at. Uh, you know, the first type is structured, and that would be, you know, the start and top so start and stop times of the housekeeping services or the maintenance work orders, whatever the case may be, any transactional type uh, services or work that we're doing. Uh, a semi-structured is information or data that changes frequently. So that would be occupancy. You know, today it's a, a departure and then later on today it's a back-to-back, -back, uh, those types of things. And then uh, an unstructured uh, data would be you know, guest or employee reviews on what's uh, what they say about our services, the company, uh, you know, what they say on Facebook or guest comment cards, whatever the case may be. And so all this data is spread out all sorts of different systems and in different places. And the, one of the challenges we have is being able to aggregate this data so we can make decisions and be able to uh, move forward. And so as we look at uh, data, before we go down this, this road any further, I want to take a look and look at Mas Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so many of us are familiar with this where we start at the bottom is the most important and work our way to the top. You know, the same type of methodology or this pyramid can be applied to, to data where we collect, we store, we analyze, we do a prediction, and then we make a decision based on this data. And so here we have all this information and here we have to figure out how to use it and how to, uh, how to use it to our advantage. Because the data tells us a story. It tells us a story about what's happening, what can happen. And so we need to make sure that we understand what it's trying to tell us. And so there are multiple ways to collect it, whether that be through observations, uh, asking people, uh, guest comment cards, or standing in front of somebody with a pen and paper and a clipboard, uh, or even using software to track and, and uh, track the work and, and look at the work and collect all that data that we're after. And so from the software side, we have two uh, industry gurus with us here on data. We have Linnell Eddy, uh, who is the founder of LSI Tools, and we have uh, Jeremy Gall, who is also the founder of Breezeway. And they've been gracious enough to give us a few moments of their time today to answer a couple of questions and also to answer your questions. 
Uh, before I forget, on the right hand side, there's a spot for you on your GoToWebinar control panel for you to ask questions. And I would encourage you to type in your questions and I'll ask them as we go through. So as you think about that, we'll jump right into the first question that we have prepared. And that would be, what are some challenges in looking at and analyzing data? And I'll let our, our panelists decide who goes first and what kind of knowledge we'll share with us. <laughs> we'll jump right in. I'm, I'm, I think the biggest challenge in looking at and analyzing data, I think it comes before that. I think the biggest challenge is in the collection of data. I think uh, make sure, making sure you gather clean data and that you understand the data, the analytic challenges come afterward if you don't understand the data. So making sure you have clean data and that you understand where it came from and what it means, I think at that point, the analysis becomes much easier. Okay. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, and I think it's the collection piece of the puzzle um, that usually ends up tripping everybody up. Um, the analyzing is sort of the fun part. <laughs> That's uh, right. It's, it's, the, it's the collection um, where you have to put in the work. And I think <clears throat> even taking a step back even further, you know, those challenges start um, on what you want to collect. Uh, you can't collect everything. And so how you think about what's important and the data that's important to you and what you're going to collect and how you're going to do it and setting up the whole structure so that at the end you know or you have a decent idea <clears throat> excuse me of what you're going to analyze i think that's the real um that's the real challenge it's like ask anybody who ever implemented salesforce and um you know there's so, such a powerful piece of software there's so much it can do um but you have to direct it in the right way in order to be able to harness all that value mm -hmm. So then as you as you look at uh, collecting and analyzing this and knowing what to look for, what recommendations would you give to someone as to what data they should be looking for, whether that's done through a software or whether that's done through a tick sheet or Excel or whatever? I mean, how, how does one set their goals and decide what's important? Well, let's talk about the back end of housekeeping because that's what we're that's really what we're looking at today. So what numbers are important to us on the back end? Uh, for instance, you know, we want to know based on our schedule how much time, you know, do we have any, let's just say that the question is, do we have enough employees? All right, do we have enough employees for the weekend? Or perhaps I need to convince my, my management team that I need extra staff. So let's do really simple. Let's talk about a spreadsheet. What we can do is we can take a look at each of our homes. We can look at the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, and the number of kitchens and assign an estimated time for you know, how much time it will take to clean those. And we multiply by the quantity in that home, say there's four bedrooms, and I know it's gonna take, depending if I'm making beds or what I'm doing there. Um, and you can get an estimate on how much it's gonna take you to do that one home. And by doing that on each home and sticking it in a spreadsheet, you can add those together on, you could do that by hand if you had to, you know, know how many homes you have, which are scheduled that week, and be able to see how much time you need and divide that out by how many people it takes. So in that case, you can see how we're talking about the collection of data is always the most, you know, the biggest challenge in data is collecting it. In that case, you're collecting it uh, based on your estimates and based on your know-how, because if you've been in housekeeping long enough, you know how long it takes. You know, you know how many that particular team can do, and you can kind of do it in your head. But we're collecting data because we're talking about doing things like um, convincing uh, staff that we need something or we have too many or you know our kpis keeping to our kpis so those are my thoughts yeah i think just building on that you uh, <clears throat> it's about um you know most of these operational questions can be boiled down um into three very large you know imprecise buckets but you know what needs to be done number one Number two, how long is it going to take? Um, and number three, how much is it going to cost? Mm -hmm. um, and then whether those are internal or external costs. And I think um, when you break it down in that manner, then you you have to start, a, you know, when we think about for our own organization, we think about um, 
decisions that we're making that are data driven. You start at very large buckets and then you break down that bucket into constituent questions. Okay, what needs to be done? Let me understand that and what's going to help drive that. Yes, the bedrooms and bathrooms, but then the rest of the details of the property, you know, can help drive exactly what needs to be done to meet your brand standards um, across a very large, unique set of properties. So you're trying to take one thing um, and apply it individually across a large, you know, across a large array or, or number of properties. Um, and so that's part of the equation as well, I think, because you think about what are we actually going to be looking at? What's mm -hmm. the data we need to have as sort of step one? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. So now as we look at this data and look at where we're going, uh, you know, the, the likelihood of us having a large volume of data is pretty good. So how do we decide which one we can see? I think I'd, I think you want to you're going to have to, if you have a large volume of data, you're going to have to pick which data sets are important and why they're important and focus on a problem. I think, you know, focusing on an, on an issue when you're, when you've got data is really the, uh, you know, the best way to solve your issue. You're going to take a look at the data that you have and apply it to that problem. So handling a large volume of data, it's just like, like, like he just said, you know, Jeremy said that you need to break it down into buckets and, you know, that's how you eat an elephant. It's one bite at a time. When we do things like you talked about the guest reviews and those types of things, when we do guest reviews, um, what we do is we break those down into buckets just like just like that. We have a, a bucket that goes to housekeeping and the, the bucket that goes to housekeeping are only those questions that pertain to housekeeping. So anytime there's a question on house a review that involves housekeeping, it automatically will go to your you know, your, your manager or whoever you delegate to be in charge of that. And that's a large volume of data uh, that you're breaking down into small bits. I think um, building on that, you know, data can be, data can be broken down into you know, signal and noise. Um, and, and signal is something you can use and you can analyze and noise. Um, is just what it sounds like, right? It's, um, mm -hmm. it's what you don't want. It's what you don't want to hear. It's what you don't want to analyze because it throws you off the scent of making smart decisions that are actually based on the data. And so I think the biggest issue with, you know, how does one handle the volume of data that you can see? Well, the first thing you do is you take, um, you know, those three categories of data that you mentioned at the beginning to structured, semi-structured, and completely unstructured. And you do what you can to stack the deck in your favor. Um, and what I mean by that is you do everything you can to create more structured data um, than unstructured data. And the more structured data you have data you have to work with, well that helps solve some of your problem. It's much easier to understand you're reducing the noise um, accumulation uh, that builds up with semi-structured or unstructured data. Um, and then if it's in a better format and you've already picked what you're going to be, you know, what your the problems you're trying to solve, well then, you know, you, you've really come a long way to actually seeing, um, seeing something that can help drive a, a, a database decision. So as one looks at this this data, I mean, you, we have this sea of data out there. Some of it's good, some of it's not. And there's always another piece sitting out there that may be helpful. Does it make sense to set a deadline of how long I'm going to look at and analyze and collect and then make a decision as opposed to have it going on, you know, just having analysis paralysis, you know, trying to get out of too much? Yeah, no, I think you don't turn it off. I mean, I think you don't turn it off, but you go into this with a game plan. Um, you know, Lynette's right on target. You, you go into this with a game plan and you understand what problems you're trying to solve. And you think about what are the KPIs that are going to drive your business? What's really important to me? And then how can I turn on as much information to help me um, make smart decisions um, based on the data I'm collecting that is pertinent to that problem? And then you, you do everything you can to make sure that the data you're getting that's pertinent to that problem is structured. And if you if you set it up correctly like that, 
um, you never turn it off. It's just, it keeps accumulating. What you end up doing is if it's set up correctly, you keep revisiting. You're revisiting the analysis. You're revisiting um, just like a scientific um, experiment, right? You're, you're revisiting your hypothesis and then refining it. Um, and finding new ways to make improvements. It's not, um, it's very, should be a very iterative process. It's not like, uh, I'm going to do this one time and I'm, and I'm done. Mm, okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Lanell, anything you wanted to add to that? No, I agree. I think that, I, I think that's really simple. You know, you, you have to focus on a problem before you, before you can know which data which data you're pulling out of that big data set. You can't handle a large volume of data uh, when you're making decisions unless it's, well, I guess you could, but uh, for us and what we're looking at, I think that we need to take out bits and bytes. Bits and bytes, okay, excellent. Thank you both. So now as we start to uh, transition here, uh, the ultimate use of data is to, or one of the uses is to persuade. I know we, Linnell, you'd mentioned, you know, trying to um, get more staff or know what staff mm -hmm. I need. But, you mm -hmm. know, it could also be I need a new tool, I need more space, mm -hmm. uh, I need another van, um, you know, I need another thousand employees, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever the case may be. So how do we, how do we, once we have this data, we've analyzed it, how do we look at it and then present it in a way to whether that be to our staff to talk about hey we need to improve or to our our supervisor or boss that says hey you know I need another three cars to get this work done how, how can we best present that data to persuade somebody to see our perspective I think presenting the data depends on who you're presenting it to to start with but just as a bottom line no matter who you present the data to keeping data simple keeping it simple is is the best way to do it. Because the easiest way to upset any apple cart when you want to persuade somebody is to overcomplicate your arguments. So for instance, using that same example that we did earlier, you know, you want to convince your management team that you need additional cleaners for your turn day. Now, we all know there's software that gathers that data. You really don't have to do it by hand. Uh, barring situations like a frat party the night before, normally you, you have a good idea either by your software or by your spreadsheet or even just by your experience to know how long it takes your staff to clean each home. So if you, if you were to present this data to your management team, I think the best way to present this type of data would be in a simple spreadsheet. And I think it would be a printed thing that I would hand out to my whoever I'm talking to so they can see it in their hand. Uh, data is very, very powerful when it's presented in graph format or when it's presented uh, in front of your face, you can actually see it. It shows that number one, that you've taken the time to collect the data. It shows that you've taken the, um, the time to analyze it in the way that you've put it out. And so presented it, remember when we were in kids, uh, we were kids in school and they, anytime you were gonna present data, how do we do it? We typed up a report, they made us do a report. So. Presenting data in a visual format is very powerful. So I think um, I think making sure that you keep it simple, but you do it on a visual ba uh, visual manner. I think that's that's the key. Okay. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, nobody likes to look at a large amount of data um, to try and make it. You know, unless once it's analyzed and you're trying to be persuasive, um, less is is so much more. And I think uh, you know, this is this in a nutshell is called data visualization, um, and it's really really um, cool corner of data science. A few years ago, I took a big data course at MIT, and um, there was a one week was dedicated to data visualization, um, and I think it's about it's all about clarity. You know, there's a um, uh, it's a it's a sad sort of um, it's a sad cautionary tale, um, but I'll tell it really quick. <laughs> when the spaceship when the Challenger spaceship um, accident happened, um, there was plenty of evidence before the launch that the O rings um, for the rockets were, would fail in cold temperatures. Um, they, they knew this going into it. Um, and they'd actually presented the information. But the information they presented was in a little bit of a convoluted manner, and it just wasn't clear. They didn't just put in front of um, the, the, the final decision makers a very simple chart that showed 
hey, look, every time we've tried these rockets, when it's below 36 degrees, we've had a problem. Um, and instead, they tried to be a little cute and, and, and provide too much information. Um, and they got overruled and they went ahead with the launch. Um, and so I think keeping it simple and then figuring out what's a persuasive way to just, in the simplest format, indicate what you're trying to show. Um, and when it comes to some of these housekeeping and, and back ops operational tasks, like we can keep it really, really simple. Uh, and I think it should be. Uh, a simple graph is, is the best way to do it. Yeah, you know, I, um, I I think the best thing about the work that we do is that we're not building, we're not doing brain surgery, we're not doing heart surgery, or trying to put a man on the moon. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just everything can be broken down into simple pieces for us to see to see and work with. Um, and you know, I mean, data can be done and presented with you know children's Legos or or building blocks to show any number of things. So mm -hmm. I, from that visualization piece, I think that's some of the fun things that we can do um you know I, I i yeah so yes excellent um thank you for that uh and then the, the other question is going to be um how can we use data to improve ourselves you know i i know there's lots of um information out there on 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 how it's important to get feedback and why feedback is important how can we use data to to help us accomplish the improvement that we're after? Well, when I think about using the data, uh, and well, when I think about importance of data for housekeeping, I instantly think of the often overlooked analytics that we have, like for operations. Most companies know their reservation pace, they know which homes are distressed, they know where their weeks are soft, but they don't apply that same analysis or oversight to our housekeeping departments, for instance. The things that we could do are we could like consider tracking our income against our expenditure, identify like a source of income that would offset our cleaning costs and um, make sure that our income and our expenses in housekeeping are monitored and reconciled. So another thing might be to use the estimated clean times I'm talking about earlier for each property to determine how much time is needed on 100% occupancy to turn and begin to measure that so you do know, you know, where your money's going to, how much you're paying your uh, housekeepers as opposed to, you know, whether you needed 100% of them uh, or whether you do it by piecemeal. Some people pay them by the house, some people pay them as employees, so I guess that would depend. Another way would be to track your cleaner pay against the satisfaction ratings that are coming in, so you would track the individual um, performance of a cleaner to determine who your top cleaners are and also uh, those KPIs for you like your callbacks and things like that um, tracking the people that cost you money for refunds or those top cleaners that you know give you great feedback in your reviews so all those type of things can be put into KPIs and allow you as a manager of a, of a housekeeping organization to measure how your housekeepers are doing um, so that's, you know, that's one of the ways I think that we can use our data to make us better at what we do. Yeah, I, mean, I think um, this isn't a new thing, right? We've been doing this. We might not, we might not um, put a bow on it the way we do these days, but mm -hmm. people formally or informally have been using data to um, improve departments um, in every industry, hopefully for a really long time. And, and certainly in, in vacation rental management, um, this is familiar, right? This is familiar territory. The marketing department's super familiar with how they do this um, when they look at different campaigns and, and um, you know, where, which is the most uh, revenue positive marketing um, campaigns that they should be running. And I think housekeeping, um, has been doing this as well, um, albeit sometimes a little more informally um, for quite some time. But I think if you do this again on an iterative process, you use the data, um, you use that to bring forward an efficiency change and improvement to the process. It's a very heavy operational and process orientated business. Um, of keeping and, and, and maintenance operations um, and it just lends itself at every step of the way to be making incremental improvements and I think that ought to be the goal like every every quarter uh, multiple times a year 
you know, how have we improved our process to become more efficient, to meet our brand standards and to deliver a better product? Um, and data can help you every step of the way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's, whether it's the reported, you know, we look at the reported issue, the, the ratio of issues that get reported between cleaners versus inspectors. Um, you know, and are your inspectors catching more, more issues than your cleaners are? Um, and, you know, there's just, when you start looking at some of these deeper questions, um, it really brings forward um, ways that you can, you can drive improvement. Yeah, I think we can, I think expanding on what you said, we could like break it down into three quick ways to look at it. We could look at, um, you know, what happens uh, we can think of individual productivity per employee that we can measure and we can do something with that. We can look at our internal quality that you were talking about, the, the inspectors, and see, you know, we can measure quality by that and then by the customer feedback. Those three things, if you just started with just those three things and began to measure those, I mean, you could do a lot to uh, help the housekeeping manager, manager to identify trends, to identify, you know, maybe anticipate any challenges they're going to have based on that historical data, and they could also forecast with it. I mean, just doing those three simple measurement of those three simple areas. Yeah, I think that's right, and I think, um, I don't think this is a question um, that you have, Dirk, but the, the really fascinating thing um, that, gets, that gets me excited and gets us excited is that um, increasingly, you know, the data is not, you're not going to be using the data to um, improve yourself and, and try and figure that out. The data is just going to, we should be unlocking a world where the right structured data um, is just purely delivering um, a better process to you and alleviating some of the pain of housekeeping departments and managers having to be logistics experts. Um, mm -hmm. If you're collecting data the right way and then you're managing it and you're using some sophisticated tools to do it, um, you, so much more of it can be automated. You can be there and the system can help you. Um, this, is, this is the promise of real, this is the promise of real big data, right? This is right. why people are doing this. They're, not, they're collecting it so they can analyze it, of course, um, and then drive better decisions. But the real promise after that is that by collecting the data and setting up the right structures, um, more it can, you know, the decisions and the improvements can just be almost driven for you as alerts and notifications where you just sit back and, and the magic happens. Okay, so I have a question from Chris, and he he asks, you know, listening to you know gathering this data and then presenting this data, how how can how can how can I best create an excitement in my staff to receive this data and want this feedback? What do you think? Yeah, I'm I'm just too eager to to, to answer this one. The um, I think the excitement stems from when it comes to the staff. What we've seen. Um, and I think this just holds true in multiple industries. People want to be good at their job. Uh, people have a people have an inherent drive, um, for the most part, to and, and the people you're working with and hiring should have this. They want to know what it is, what the expectation is to get their job done well. And I think you drive that excitement into your staff by saying, "Hey, you know what?" We're going, to, we're going to start using some tools that are going to help us deliver better, efficient operations. We're going to understand more about our business. Yes, there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, but in the end, and really quickly, what it's going to do is you're going to know exactly what you're supposed to do to get your job done. And it's going to feel good. Um, and then, as you continue to do that, you're going to understand how you can do your job even better very quickly. So... I think that uh, you're saying, how can you create excitement for these processes and, and receiving the data? So there's a couple of ways that I can think of right off the top of the head that I, I've seen done. Um, reward, you know, for no callbacks. You know, if you have no callbacks over a certain amount of time, you get a reward. Or, you know, if that's what you're driving toward. It's going to depend what you're driving toward. But 
one of the most important things is communication with them and listening to their ideas. Everybody wants to be heard. It doesn't matter who you are, you want to be heard. And so asking for their ideas and when you get a good one, implementing their ideas really excites them about their job. So, you know, if you say you're having their, you know, anything from bed making, the way that they, they you know, any ideas they have about best way to make a bed or to do the linens or to clean the kitchens, or it depends on who you're motivating. Uh, so I think rewarding for those types of behavior and then listening to them shows them that you care about them. That usually creates a good sense of, of belonging in that and, and can help you in what you're looking to do there. So then, so then there's another question on top of that, and this comes from, this comes from uh, Susan, and she says, you know, how do I go about gathering um, this information from my staff on perhaps processes that can improve or things they're noticing, almost like an employee comment card, I think is what she's asking. How do I tally that and use that to understand, you know, what their perspective is? Because, you know, I mean, a lot of employees are either, either afraid or or think it's um, blowing smoke when you uh, have a, an employee uh, comment card type scenario. What, what, I how think, can you help her? Well, there's a couple of things that I think about that come to mind. One of the, if you're talking about the best way to gather the data from them, you can have a central place that they go and they either put their, their feedback and then you pick it up at that point if it's electronic. Well, most of the time it's not going to be electronic in this case because you're looking at people that are out in the field. Um, I would have them write their feedback down and, you know, give it to me in a certain spot. Like maybe have a box out front, you know, ideas on how we can better, uh, you know, do better or, you know, collecting it that way. A way that really is good to do, and I don't know how often you want to get this data back, but at least when you have your housekeeping meetings, you know, setting aside a small amount of time for that because people, like I said, they want to be heard, but it's really, you know, it's really a good time for you to ask for that feedback at that time. Um, I hope that answered the question. Yeah, I would just add, um, it depends on your organization, but um, mm -hmm. something that we use and something that I think uh, we use this at, at, at FlipKey as well, and I just think it's, it's just a powerful organizational tool um is um one-on-one -on -one meetings and it sounds a little daunting to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with everybody on your team uh but you have to cultivate a um an environment where people feel really comfortable to share that information to feel like they're heard and it's as simple as setting up like a 15-minute meeting and you start it off and you say tell me about your week tell me tell me what's going on i, I want i want to hear back from you and um, you'd be amazed at, um, after a very short amount of time, how that what comes out of those conversations. Um, sometimes it'll be personal. Um, sometimes it'll be you'll hear something that's going on that might affect somebody's work work week. But oftentimes, what you'll end up hearing um, is you've created this open forum where there are problems and issues, um, and probably managerial processes that could be working better that you are fully unaware of um, because you haven't really invited the conversation to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. One of the things that one of the things that I would also think about is you want to get honest feedback, especially if you're going to be asking for that. And you may want to have a way that you can uh, ensure their anonymity by, uh, you know, by like a suggestion box or something like that. That's the kind of thing that I think of. Uh, when you want honest feedback as to what's happening out in the field. Okay, excellent, excellent, thank you. And then to kind of building on this, uh, Natalie's asked a question, what do you use to track performance and is there a tool you would recommend? <laughs> I think both Jeremy and I both have, we have software tools that will help track performance. I think both of us have those. Um, I like to track performance. Now, if we're talking about the amount of time it takes to clean the house, or the amount of callbacks, both of those can be tracked, you know, through software. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think um, exactly, exactly what Manel said. Um, you know, and I, then I think you, you can use a, I don't know if that's the, if that's the, que if the question is, you know, tracking what's happening in the field and performance in the field, um, we both have tools that can help you do that. If it's greater performance issues, um, you know, I think I think there's a, there's other tools that are available to you. Is there like 
um, doing reviews of employees and, and things like that. But, um, okay. Excellent. Thank you. So that's that's our last question. There, there's uh, one other question from uh, from a uh, from an attendee, and uh, so we'll ask this question. We'll give each of you an opportunity to talk a little bit about data, and then we'll we'll close it out. And um, you know, with the importance of data and how accessible it can be, or with the tools we have, whether that be through software or through Excel or whatever the case may be. Um, if someone wanted to become more educated and learn more about gathering, analyzing, and presenting data, you know, to not only help them with a, a specific challenge or task, but just as part of their self-improvement, what would you recommend? How would they go about doing that? Is there a place they can go or things they can do or maybe webinars or other books you know about that would be good for them to read? I think I think attending attending webinars like this where you learn what kind of data is important for you to gather uh, or you know I think I think knowing what data you want to gather to start with is important um, you know deciding which data is important to you and then finding out how to gather it I would you know there's software tools out there that gather all kinds of things so I would be really specific about what I wanted to know in the end so I knew what data I wanted to gather because you fall into a trap of being, you know, gathering all the data and then being overwhelmed by the information without having time. And you have no time to sit down after you to, to interpret the data correctly. So I think having tools that do that for you, that you just look at a report for what you're wanting to see, I think those are huge helpfulness. You know, those are hugely, hugely important in being helpful for getting to where you want to go with that data. Uh, learning more about how to present data one of the best and easiest ways to present data is by PowerPoint if you're not going to do it, you know, on physical paper. And those classes are really easy to take. You can take online, you know, online presentation classes. Uh, so much is online. I would start there if I wanted to, you know, be educated in my spare time about how to do that. Okay. Jeremy, any additional thoughts? Yeah, I think that's I think that's right on point. I think you have to think about um, I think Linnell really hit it. You got to think about what it is you want. If you want to get educated more about um, data collection and analysis, um, I think when it comes to you know we're not talking about uh, massive massive big data sets um, where you need to learn how to use Tableau, you know, software or you know plug in IBM Watson to figure out what's going on here. Um, I think learning some online courses, becoming a pro at Microsoft Excel, and then honing your PowerPoint skills to, you know, take that analysis and turn it into the simplest bar chart or pie chart that you can. Um, and, you know, with, with two bullet points on it and really learning how to hone that skill. Um, will get you a very long way. And if, if anybody wants to reach out to, to us, I mean, I'm available to chat. If you want to talk about how, you know, you can physically collect that data, um, I'm happy to sit down and tell you about, you know, whatever I can help with that. So if there's anything I can do, I'm help, I'm happy to help get started. Yeah, right. and, same as, and vice versa. And, um, you know, because I think, I think both Linnell and I, we've been doing this for, We've been doing this for quite some time, and um, that's what's exciting about this industry and um, helping everybody get better at their job. Um, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Thank you both. I just posted uh, or put on the display the, your contact information where they've got uh, a general phone number and then your specific email, and then my uh, contact information is there as well, so I can certainly do that. So. To wrap up, um, you know, our, our conversation about data, and we've covered a lot of ground. Any final thoughts from the both of you is before we close out our, our webinar today? No, I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm very passionate about data. I know that I'm a, I'm, I think that in housekeeping specifically, gathering data for what, for what you need to know about how you're doing your job and how you're people under you are doing your job, I think that's really important. And I think it can make a difference in, um, in how your department heads see you, you know, by being able to know what's happening in your, in your, in your particular department by the numbers. 
So I think those KPIs are crazy important. Yeah. Don't let the marketing team have all the fun. The marketing team, they make it, they, they, they've got their budget and they're spending it. Um, and they're, they're spending it to attract new guests and bring back old ones. Um, and they're using a lot of data analysis to justify what they're doing. Um, don't let them have all, have all the fun with it. And I think really, um, there's a lot that can be done and a lot that can be, uh, there's just, this can change. This can change. We've seen it happen. And I'm, I'm sure Linnell can say the same thing. Um, we've seen it happen where taking a new approach to your back office operations can, can literally change a business. Um, yeah. And I think we're also just at the beginning of how we're going to see that continue to evolve. And so starting now and building up competency in it is going to just position the company incredibly well for the future. And um, it's all about the back of the office. It really is. Like It hasn't been for a long time, mm -hmm. um, but the tide is, is quickly, quickly turning to being about the back of the office and the industrious part of property management. Um, so it's exciting. I agree. I agree. Well, excellent. Well, Jeremy and Linnell, thank you so much for your time today and your sharing your expertise and your passion to uh, to help us out and help us understand this this uh, new four letter word we get to talk about called data. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we use it in a positive way instead of a negative way like other four letter words we know. Anyway, so uh, appreciate you and to all of you that attended. We are grateful you are here and thank you for attending. Uh, this webinar will be available on the VRHP YouTube channel. It'll be uh, uploaded later this week. So if you'd like to revisit some of the conversation or topics or, or um, answers that were given, you certainly can do so. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you at a future webinar. Thank you for attending. And thank you, Jeremy and Linnell. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Derek.